In this video, I'm going to talk about systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE for short. It's an autoimmune disease in which immune cells attack the internal organs and cells of the body, causing a lot of inflammation and damage. This damage mediated by autoantibodies and immune complexes. They attack nearly every organ and system in our body. So, it's a multi-systemic disorder affecting females during the reproductive years. It's called erythematosus because of a butterfly rash affecting the skin over the cheeks and the nasal bridge called malar rash, which is bisonomonic for SLE if found in these patients. These autoantibodies are produced by special type of cells called autoreactive B lymphocytes. They attack our body tissues to cause a wide range of symptoms and signs. If they affect the heart, it may lead to pericarditis, pericardial effusion, myocarditis, or even endocarditis. Pericarditis being the most common complication in the heart. In the lung, it may cause pleurisy, pleural effusion. Kidney also can be affected in the form of proliferative glomerular nephritis. Arthralgia, arthritis found nearly in all patients. Anemia, leukopenia, or even pancytopenia can occur. The cause of systemic lupus is not clearly known, but it may be linked to uh, the following factors. Genetic factors, environmental factors, hormonal, or even medication. The disease isn't linked to a certain gene, but people with lupus often have family members with other autoimmune conditions. Genetic mutations in genes including for protein synthesis called complement protein C1Q, C2, C4 have been found. GREX1 gene mutation also found in these patients. Environmental factors are the main trigger of that disease. Ultraviolet rays damage the skin, smoking, vitamin D deficiency, Epstein-Barr virus infection, epigenetics and monozygotic twins being at risk. Let's talk about phagocytosis. If our cells are exposed to a risk factor, for example, UV rays, their DNA will be damaged and cellular death by apoptosis occurs, leading to a destruction of these cells into small vesicles or vacuoles called apoptotic bodies. These apoptotic bodies undergo phagocytosis, but before it, it must be surrounded by a special type of protein called opsonins in a process called opsonization. These opsonins are fragments of complement proteins, macrophage containing lysosomal vesicles help in the destruction of these cellular apoptotic bodies, they engulf it by the macrophages in a process called phagocytosis, which have a complement receptor in their surface, help in phagocytosis by binding with a complement protein over the surface of apoptotic bodies to destroy it in a phagolysosomal vesicle inside macrophages. And now let's talk about pathophysiology of systemic lupus erythematosus. When a normal body cell, B lymphocytes for example, or any other body cell exposed to a risk factor such as UV rays, stress, surgery, smoking, or even pregnancy, their DNA will be damaged. So these cells try to repair themselves, but if they can't, they go under a process called programmed cell death or apoptosis to destroy the dead cells into apoptotic bodies or apoptotic vacuoles containing cellular material nuclear material, Golgi apparatus, or even mitochondria. Let's remember the opsonization process. It's mandatory for phagocytosis and clearance of damaged cells, but in patient has systemic lupus, erythematosus, there's a complement deficiency. These patients are immune deficient to certain complement proteins such as C1Q, C2, and C4 because of mutations in genes are responsible for production of these complement proteins, which are mandatory for phagocytosis. So macrophage cannot engulf or clear the cellular material after apoptosis. No clearance, there's clearance deficiency or clearance defect. Macrophage becomes smaller in size, die early because they cannot engulf damaged cells. So if that apoptotic material are not cleared efficiently, 
Cellular material, nuclear material are now exposed to our immune system. So our immune system mount an immune response against our damaged cells. A special type of cells called dendritic cells, a type of antigen presenting cells come to the area of apoptosis or cellular death try to clear that cellular material or nuclear material. They engulf eat that apoptotic bodies then damage that bodies to a smaller particles called O2 antigens to present that O2 antigen on the surface over a molecule called MHC class 2 or a major histocompatibility complex type 2. After that, that dendritic cells migrate to nearby lymph nodes to present that O2 antigen to another cell called T lymphocyte so we can initiate now an immune response and inside the lymph nodes dendritic cells attach to another type of cells called T lymphocytes or naive T lymphocytes by T cell receptor cytokines released from dendritic cells stimulate T lymphocytes to produce interleukin 4 to stimulate themselves to proliferate and differentiate into another two types of cells called T helper cells T helper 1 and T helper 2 T helper 2 is a major cell in the disease pathogenesis but T helper 1 is not implicated in the disease pathogenesis because it's responsible for cell mediated immunity and systemic lupus erythematosus is a type of humoral immune response T helper 2 secretes cytokines interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor alpha to stimulate B lymphocytes B lymphocytes has a stimulation also directly from dendritic cells. Dendritic cells release B lymphocyte stimulator or BLYS to stimulate B lymphocyte to differentiate into a B memory cell or a plasma cell. Plasma cells produce O2 antibodies that bind to an O2 antigen to form immune complex that cause inflammatory process in systemic lupus erythematosus patient. O2 antibodies produced by plasma cells are different, mainly against our nuclear material called antinuclear O2 antibodies or ANA. ANA has several subtypes. Anti-double stranded DNA is specific for lupus. Anti-Rho, anti-Law, anti-RNP, that three are not specific. Another one is anti-SMIS O2 antibody which is very specific for systemic lupus erythematosus. Antiphospholipids against cell membrane, phospholipids are present. Anti-erythrocyte also found against red blood cell cell membrane. Antiplatelets also found against platelet cell membrane leading to anemia or thrombocytopenia. Systemic lupus symptoms vary widely. Neurological or neuropsychiatric symptoms occur. A common neurological disorder people with SLE have is headache. Other common manifestations of systemic lupus include seizures, epilepsy, psychosis, delirium, depression, or personality disorder. More rare manifestations are demyelination in the form of Guillain-Barré syndrome, transverse myelitis, or mononeuropathy. Movement disorder in the form of chorea if extrapyramidal system affected, aseptic meningitis if meningeal layers inflamed, or stroke if blood vessels supplying the brain are affected by O2 antibodies and immune complexes. Skin manifestations are chronic cutaneous lupus or discoid lupus, which is a rounded or coin-shaped lesion in the form of hyperkeratosis, redness, thickening of the skin, leaving a scar which leading to hair loss or alopecia, mainly affecting face and scalp. It's non itchy Another symptom is alopecia. It's different from alopecia of the scoid rash. It's diffuse non-scarring alopecia or non-scarring hair loss. Acute cutaneous lupus manifests as a rash. Some have the classic malar rash, commonly known as butterfly rash associated with the disease this rash occurs in 20 up to 60 percent of people rash is red painful and itchy covering the cheeks nasal bridge sparing nasolabial folds lungs can be affected systemic lupus erythematosus can cause pleuritic pain as well as inflammation of the pleura known as pleurisy pleural effusion as shown in x-ray or even pulmonary fibrosis if the heart involved it may cause pericarditis, pericardial effusion, myocarditis, or even Lippmann Sachs endocarditis. It causing a sterile vegetation over the heart valves. Let's take a cross section in the heart wall to show the different layers affected in systemic lupus erythematosus. Myocardium, endocardium, pericardium. If O2 antibodies and immune complex is affected, the pericardium is causing pericarditis, which is the commonest feature in SLE patient in the heart. 
may be leading to effusion. Pericardial effusion is a complication of pericarditis, flask-shaped heart, or water bottle sign in X-ray. Vegetations of Leibman Sachs endocarditis may lead to stroke. They are formed over the mitral valve or the aortic valve. If detached, it ascending in the aortic branches to the brain, leading to stroke. Fluid surrounding the heart is a pericardial effusion or pericardial tamponade. Myocardial inflammation is called myocarditis. That the features in the heart. Joints are affected. Inflammation of the joints is called arthritis. It's found nearly in all patients. 90% of patients have arthritis, pain, redness, hotness of the joint, with morning stiffness. A specific type of arthropathy or deformity is found. Ulnar deviation of the finger from second to fifth finger found in patient with systemic lupus erythematosus, which is called Jacob's arthropathy. May be a differential diagnosis with rheumatoid arthritis. Renal involvement That is a structural unit of the kidney and functional unit, nephron and glomerulus, afferent and efferent arterioles. Painless passage of blood and protein in the urine may often be the only presenting sign of kidney involvement due to diffuse proliferative glomerulonephrites. Acute or chronic renal impairment may develop with lupus nephrites, leading to acute or end-stage renal disease or end stage kidney failure. Because of early recognition and management of systemic lupus erythematosus with immunosuppressive drugs or corticosteroids, end stage renal disease occurs in less than 5%. The histological hallmark of systemic lupus is membranous glomerulonephritis with wire loop abnormalities in electron microscopy. Hematological manifestations are anemia, Leukopenia, thrombocytopenia are collectively called pancytopenia. It's due to autoantibodies against cell membrane of RBCs, against the platelet cell membrane, against YPC cell membrane, leading to destruction or hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia. Or may be due to side effects of drug treatment of systemic lupus erythematosus, immunosuppressive, or corticosteroid. Finger cyanosis may happen. It's called Renaud phenomena. It happens due to vasoconstriction of blood vessels supplying fingers, which is a side effect of systemic lupus erythematosus. At first, fingers become white due to lack of blood supply, then become bluish due to deoxygenated blood. If blood reaches fingers again, it leads to reversible symptoms. If not, it will be gangrene and amputation. Investigation to diagnose systemic lupus erythematosus are blood testing. Blood testing are very important. Complete blood count is done to detect any abnormalities in blood cells, anemia, thrombocytopenia, or leukopenia. Serum creatinine is done to detect any changes in renal function test and early recognition of glomerulonephrites and treatment. Urine analysis is made to detect any RPCs or proteins in the urine, hematuria or proteinuria. Autoantibody are the ministry of blood testing to diagnose or exclude systemic lupus erythematosus. Treatment Mild cases which complain just from skin manifestations, malar rash or discoid rash, and joint manifestations arthralgia arthritis are managed simply. They are given non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If no response, they can be given glucocorticoids or even immunosuppressive treatment, mesotrexate and mycophenolate. Both are preventing DNA, so no immune cell proliferation, no cytokines production, and suppressing immune response. It's an overview for systemic lupus pathophysiology. Dendritic cells stimulate T-naive cells or T0 to secrete interleukin-2, stimulate itself to proliferate and increase their number. Then they secrete interleukin-4 to differentiate into T helper 2. T helper 2 stimulate B lymphocytes by releasing cytokines to human necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 6 to change B lymphocyte nature into a very specific type of cell called plasma cell, which secretes auto antibody against our body tissue or against our self antigen to cause autoimmune response. Tarcolimus is given to produce suppression for interleukin 2 and prevent T lymphocyte proliferation. Mycophenolate and adathioprine are given to prevent B lymphocytes and T lymphocyte activation, so no production of auto antibody. Retoximab, our monoclonal antibody, is given to suppress B lymphocytes. 
Dendritic cells produce B lymphocyte stimulator to stimulate B lymphocytes. A very specific drug, monoclonal antibody, pilimumab, is given to suppress B lymphocyte stimulator cytokines and prevent B lymphocyte activation or autoantibody production. Antinuclear antibody, I have several subtypes. Double strand DNA autoantibody correlates with lupus nephritis. Antihistones are found with drug induced lupus due to hydralazine, isoniazide, or procrinamide. It usually happens in all patients.